What's up, everybody? It's Alex and Marco, the Vaga Brothers, sitting down with our good friend, Hey Nadine. Hello! And today, we're gonna talk about how to study abroad. All right, so we're making this video because six months ago, we were all invited to the White House as part of this big travel blogger summit on study abroad and global citizenship because studying abroad, learning other languages, learning about the world is an increasingly essential skill for our generation. That's why they brought us in, the travel <laughs> blogging crew, because we know the hacks to help you guys get started. So let's do that. Have any of you guys ever studied abroad? Uh, no. But I've had several friends that have studied abroad. I think you I have studied abroad. Long story short, studying abroad is good because it opens you up to finding out more about yourself and finding out more about different cultures around the world. You can also like learn new languages. It's yeah. also a big thing, especially if you're going to a non-English speaking country. I studied abroad in New Zealand and technically they speak English, but I pretty much learned a different language down there as well. Kiwi. Aspera. <laughs> it, it gives you a chance to also travel while you're in school as well because you don't have to wait till you're finished. You can have fun and learn, learn at the same Whoa, time. That's why you watch Bad Brothers though, right? <laughs> so. Of course! Oh. Right now, only about 10% of Americans are studying abroad, right? Right, yeah, there's 10% of Americans studying abroad, and three quarters of them are white, and over 63% study in Europe. So that means that there's not enough people studying abroad, and they're all kind of going to the same places. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that you've decided you want to study abroad, what are some of the barriers that you are going to face? Well, there's some barriers that are real, and there's some that are perceived. So starting with the perceptions, I mean, one of the most common ones is that you know, you're gonna be away from family and friends. So what do you do about family and friends? Is it really that bad to be away from mama and dad for a while? Skype. Yeah, 21st Skype. century, guys. You know? Your iPhone probably sends iMessage. Okay, another one, people might say that living abroad can be intimidating. What would you guys say to that? Definitely, but in a good way, right? In a very good way. I think it's good to put yourself out of your comfort zone and try new things. So you learn and grow as a person. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, but what about that money? Money, money. Um, so the biggest thing is that people say, oh, I can't afford to live abroad. I can't afford to study abroad. There's there's some great scholarships that we found out about from this conference, and we're going to make a blog post with all the information. So check the info box, and you'll see a blog post, especially the Gilman Scholarship, which gives you, if you have a Pell Grant or you're on financial aid, it will be the same exact cost to study abroad. So see more info down below. A lot of countries... These are in Europe, in, in Scandinavia, etc. that you can get your entire education paid for for free. I think that's worth pausing. Entire education paid for for free. So if you're worrying about going to school in America, period, like paying you yeah. know, tons of money, getting in student debt, going to study abroad in Europe could be a great option for you. Germany, Germany has one of the best all-around programs. Finland, we love Finland. You can get a free education there. Um, Same with Norway, but you have to pay for the cost of living. Have and that could be really the, expensive. The Nordic countries? Yeah. So as well, we all it's know. It's a bit pricey, it, yeah. it is a bit pricey, but uh, if you weigh out the total cost of yeah. like how much your education and your cost of living would be together, then it's way cheaper. also you're like, yeah. you, you get a chance to visit the Nordic countries, which are beautiful. So now the fun question, right? Where to study abroad? Uh, most people actually go to three countries, the UK, Spain, and Italy. But we're all about expanding your horizons here, so we're gonna yeah. give you a rundown of some cool places to go. So let's start off with what? China. China. I have no idea, I've never been to China. So where would you guys, both of you have been to China, where would you recommend? Shanghai, Hong Kong, Beijing. Chengdu. Chengdu, Fudan. There's a lot of universities in China, and China's gonna be a really important country to, uh, in the next century, so it's gonna be very important to speak Chinese and understand yeah. that culture. Asia. So in Asia, we've got what? I, I think one of the coolest places is Singapore. Singapore, it's English speaking. So if you guys are worried about going to another, mm -hmm. like studying abroad and not knowing the language, or you're uncomfortable with learning another language, like right off the bat, English, Singapore, English, and it's right center in the middle of Asia. Go like take weekend trips like Vietnam and Cambodia and Thailand. They're so central. It's a really great place. Yeah, that's a great point. Definitely try to make yourself a base where you can explore the rest of the region wherever you go. Brazil is blowing yeah, up. Rio, yeah, Rio. Sao Paulo, right. Buenos Aires. Costa Rica is going. Ecuador. Cetera, yeah, cetera. and all these places that we've been mentioning, they're really, really set up for tourism in general. Like, whenever you go there, they're gonna set you up. They're gonna help you kind of get your foot started. Mm -hmm. You'll pick it up, you'll meet friends. There'll yeah, be other yeah. English-speaking friends there, most likely. But also make 
a, an effort to try to connect with locals and make friends with other students who are from there because that those relationships are the ones that are going to get you those experiences that you will like never forget and that you won't be able to get just by making friends with other people from your program. All right, anyways, if you're like Nadine and I and did not study abroad, there's still an opportunity when you graduate college mm -hmm. to work abroad. So we're also talking mm -hmm. about that. We're doing collaboration, so. On my channel. Yeah, yes. Yeah, we're gonna talk about working abroad for mm -hmm. all the non-students. Or the people who have finished school. Yes. All right, so head over there, check out the video on Nadine's channel. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Vaga Brothers for new travel videos every Tuesday. Okay, stay tuned. The video's in the link. And Nadine, thank you for being on our channel. Well, thank you very much for having me. Ciao, ciao. Bye. <gasps> ah, so today I joined with the Vaga Brothers. Hello. Greetings. Again, and we are going to tell you guys a bit of everything of what you need to know give me some questions what you need answer. to know and what you don't need to know about working abroad